Right, we're going to talk about the, uh, the female pelvis today. Um, what I really mean is um, we're going to introduce the viscera of the female pelvis. What does that mean? Well, we're going to look at the major anatomical structures, largely the organs and the big important things inside the female pelvis. It's going to be introductory. Um, I've done all of this in much more detail in other videos, but I know that a lot of people just want to know their own anatomy better or just want to, um, you know, what I'm trying to do is trying to get everybody up to the same level and then you can add detail on top of that. And it's going to be a very visual thing. It'll be, uh, what can we see? All right, what can we see? Okay, first of all, it's kind of an important concept. The pelvic diaphragm, the pelvic floor. So here's the pelvis, the bony pelvis, and you can see that um, there's like a, it's like a, it's like a bowl of muscle. You're probably aware of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a muscular, again, it's kind of a muscular dome between the thorax and the abdomen. And we, we can move it to pull air into the lungs and to breathe. This, this is like the same at the other end. This is the diaphragm um, at, the, at the bottom end, literally. And the pelvic diaphragm is actually made up by a number of muscles here. The muscles of the pelvic floor and the pelvic wall, levator ani and coccygeus and what have you. And that bowl shape makes complete sense when you look at it um, in a pelvis, in a bowl shaped pelvis. And then when you put the organs in here, they're going to be fitting into this bowl shape. When you look at two dimensional images, photos, illustrations in textbooks, it's really hard to get across exactly where the structures are inside the pelvis in relation to one another, because stuff's coming in from the side, from anteriorly, from posteriorly. It's, it's really, really, it's quite a small 3D space, right? So the pelvic diaphragm, its job is to support all of the viscera, the organs and what have you, inside the pelvis. And that's really important. But don't forget that stacked up above that, it's not just the, the pelvic organs that are sat on the pelvic diaphragm, but the abdominal organs, the thought, okay, we've got the diaphragm in between supporting things, but everything is superior to the pelvic diaphragm. And when you increase the pressure inside your torso by contracting the other muscles, you need to be able to contract those muscles of the pelvic diaphragm, of the pelvic floor, to support everything. So these are some really, really important muscles. And that's what we mean by the, the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm. Okay, what about viscera then? So I've talked about how the viscera are arranged. Here we've, we've cut away half of the pelvis and we can see various things. Well, this is anterior. So this is the front. This is posterior. This is the back or the behind. And in order from anterior to posterior, we always see bladder, vagina, rectum. Um, so the bladder is anterior most and is pushed up against the pubis bone here. Uh, here's the uterus. This is an antiverted uterus, which I think uh, most women have. The uterus is, is folded anteriorly over the bladder here. It's 85%, something like that. Um, and then, so if this is the uterus, this is the vagina here, this muscular tube. So this vagina, the muscular tube here is posterior to the bladder. The bladder must be ducting externally through the urethra. So that must be anteriorly here somewhere. So we'll have urethra, vagina, and then this is the rectum here. So the rectum is the last part of the gastrointestinal tract, the last part of the large intestine, pretty much. And it ends in the anal canal here. And here it's, it's the rectum means straight, but you can see that it's kinked here. And um, this is, so the rectum is pulled anteriorly by some of the muscles in the pelvic floor, which helps with fecal continence. It helps close off the anal canal, um, which is why it's that shape. During defecation, it straightens out. Um, so that's what we can see. Okay, so if I take this off, now we can see a little bit better. Here's the bladder. And you can see that this is an empty bladder. It's not filled with urine, so it's flattened. And this is the urethra here. The, urethra, the female urethra is pretty short. It's a few centimeters long, which is why um, women are more prone to um, UTIs, urine tract infections. This is what we mean by the urine tract. 
And inside the bladder, we can see some of the folds here of the, of the epithelium, the urothelium that's lining it and the muscle and what have you. It's a muscular bag that can distend with urine and become much larger here. So you can imagine that as the bladder fills the space within the pelvis, it pushes everything up superiorly. Um, and we'll, oh, we'll do it now. What's superior to the bladder? What is, so here we see a lot of space, but there's no space inside the human body really, well, except inside the lungs and things. So what would be here in life? It would be the small intestine. What we've got here, we can see this shiny covering. This shiny covering is the peritoneum, the shiny lining, the serous membrane lining the abdominal cavity. And that lining then is draped over the organs of the pelvis, separating essentially the organs of the pelvis from the organs of the abdomen. So here we would see a load of small intestine separated by the peritoneum from these structures down here. So as the, um, all, the, all these things need to be able to move around freely. So as the bladder gets larger, it can push things away and the small intestine can move over itself and move over things and move back down again once you empty the bladder and that sort of thing. So bladder, urethra, uterus. So here's the uterus, this thick muscular um, organ here, which there's the lumen, doesn't have much of a lumen normally, and obviously this becomes a lot larger during pregnancy. Somehow you manage to fit a whole baby in here. Oh, I've got a whole baby. So you can go from that to that to that. So the uterus can get a lot larger. And the reason the uterus is so muscular is, is so it can squeeze that baby out through the birth canal. That's, that's a pretty big baby. So what do we mean by birth canal? Well, there's the uterus there. The fetus would form within the... Um, within the lumen here, the space inside it, as it were. And then this tube here, this is the cervix. So the cervix is, is the tunnel, right? It's, it's, it's like a, a tube, a tunnel, linking the lumen inside the uterus with the vagina here. So here's the vagina. Uh, the vagina, again, is a muscular tube, um, which is easily distensible. And where the vagina meets the meets the cervix meets the uterus so the the uterus is kind of the cervix of the uterus is kind of like like this um in like an end of a dome do you know what i mean like a yeah like a end of a sphere a dome with a with a tube coming out of it which means that if you then stick a, another tube onto that, you get kind of this edge around it. And this is what we see here in cross section. These are the fornices of the vagina. We get this edge around here. So vagina, fornices, cervix, uterus. And now when we look elsewhere within the pelvis, we can see lots of other tubes in here. Many of these are ligaments. We have the suspensory ligaments of the ovary, the ovarian ligament, the round ligament. We have a number of ligaments that are anchoring things in place, connecting things. Um, some of them are embryological remnants. But one tube that's really important is this one. This is the uterine tube, which you might be more familiar with as the fallopian tube. So um, in contemporary anatomy, we're trying to move to to new terms rather than naming structures after the name of the discoverer, the originator, which can get terribly confusing because you can have several structures in the body named after one person. Um, we're trying to give them sensible names. So the uterine tube is a hollow tube which is linking the space within the uterus with the ovary. So here's the ovary here. There are two ovaries and they are lateral towards the sides of that pelvic bowl. And the fallopian tube then kind of reaches over the top of the ovary. And we can see some fimbri here, some kind of little fingers here. So when the, when the, so the ovary is obviously involved in creating, uh, producing various hormones and what have you, and producing ova, eggs. So when an ovum is released, it's collected by the fimbri of the uterine tube, and it can pass along the uterine tube and into the uterus. And if it's um, fertilized, it can then implant. We can see some of the blood vessels supplying blood to the ovary here, the gonadal artery and vein, the ovarian artery and vein, um, same structure, 
couple of different names for the same thing. Um, and then you can see that actually there's another tube linking the ovary to the uterus, which is um, the ovarian ligament. But I don't want to talk about the connective tissues too much because they're really detailed. All right, so bladder, urethra, uterus, vagina, ov ovary, uterine tube, and last of all then we have the rectum here. So here's the rectum. It's a fairly large, distensible tube, collects feces, and then um, they get expelled when, when, when appropriate. Um, we tend to see in these models, look, it looks like there's a space there, but this is the anal canal here. And obviously, if there was a space here, then this would all be open, which would be a bad thing. Normally, the anal canal is kept closed by a number of clever mechanisms. I think there are four, I've done a video on that as well. Um, so this wouldn't be a little opening here. The, these muscular sphincters would be squeezed together and kinked anteriorly and what have you. So the anal canal would be closed. Feces could collect in the rectum and be expelled when convenient. Um, and that's it. Those are the organs, the viscera within the female pelvis. Just remember that order. Um, bladder, vagina, rectum, anterior to posterior. And when you're trying to identify structures, you won't go far wrong. Okay, well, I hope that was useful. Now you're warmed up. If you want more detail, go hunt out those, uh, those more detailed videos and I will horrify you with anatomical detail maybe. Anyway, okay, right, next week we should do the, the, uh, the organs of the male pelvis, I guess, as a pair. See you next week, maybe, if you're interested, if you want to see that stuff.